Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Cookin' with Clams. I'm Will, and I'm here on Long Island at my mother's house. And now something interesting, when my mother and father bought this house back in the 70s, there was a couple things left in the house, and one of them was this. This was in the basement. This is a little homemade fishing pole. It looks like maybe like someone's, I don't know, project in Boy Scouts or something. But so I put really light line on it and I have this little lure. I don't know if that really comes out or not, but a uh, little tiny hook and lure that I put on. And now one of the things that we're gonna go do, I wanna catch a fish on it, but you know, I'm limited this time of year. I'm limited because I'm on foot. So, you know, the bridge fishing, I'm not really gonna catch anything good. But here in Cold Spring Harbor, there is a trout hatchery and they let you come on the property and you can fish. It's like for little kids, you can fish for the trout and keep them. Um, but they, they stock the rivers in New York and some of the lakes in New York. And uh, there's a lot more that goes on at the place. Maybe I can get someone to explain a little bit of what the Cold Spring Harbor fish hatchery, fish hatchery is all about. But what I do know is that we're gonna try to catch a, tra <laughs> a trout on this. I, this is probably from the 50s or 60s. I mean, that's how old this is, but we'll see. If not, I do have my other rod so that we will definitely be able to cook something today. All right, let's head over to the hatchery. <laughs> Just me and a bunch of little kids. And I'm getting out fished. I've tended to find if you have any uh, scud mimics or flies, they tend to go crazy for those. The fly, yeah, they were going after the fly. I might have to switch to a different rod. <laughs> this is kind of an experiment just to see if I could get something on yeah, that's this. That's an interesting one, yeah. I it's from seen that the before. 50s. It was found in my grandfather's house. Hmm. <laughs> so is it like a sort of like a fly fishing rod in a way? I, I'm i pretty sure just like for like a little kid for like exactly this like lake fishing. It's like hanging out there. Like cool, All right. We got one on. We got one on. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. It's pretty nice, yeah. Oh yeah. So tell me, all right. So tell me what that is. So this is a rainbow trout. You could tell because he's a uh, lighter color with some black spots on him. The okay. other type of fish that you'll find here are brook trout. So okay. during this time of the year, brook trout are going to have an orange belly because it's breeding season. They're going to be green with some lighter colored spots on their back. Okay. Do you have a uh, Do you have a knife on you? Oh yeah. Dispatch him. Okay. Get it. The fish are turned on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we proved the rod works. The rod works. <laughs> we have a fish, we have something to cook. I'm gonna try to get one more. They're also gonna have a little bit more uh, orange or red on their side uh, and on their stomachs if they're a brook trap. Oh, 
Okay, fishing with the lure definitely feels a little bit unfair. So we're gonna go we're gonna go back to the homemade rod. See if we can get one more. Here we go, here we go. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> that was with the little rod, huh? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Alright, so I have here Evan who works at the hatchery. And as you saw earlier, he was unhooking all the fish for the little kids and me. So it was me and a bunch of little kids. Perfect. A um, couple of questions. Hopefully you can answer them. So, number one thing what is the purpose of the hatchery? Well, the purpose of the hatchery is to sort of educate local about environmental stewardship. It was founded in like the mid, uh, it, it was sort of uh, increased in uh, presence in the local community under Julia Fairchild in around like the 70s and 80s. So before it was just operating as a for-profit hatchery, but it was inevitably turned into more of like a non-profit. So now most of it, uh, most of our funds come from donations or from uh, outreach towards like educational communities such as local schools, um, like lots of uh, local scout groups as well. Um, now it's more of like we get some of our funds from actually stocking fish and selling fish, but um, education is also a huge component. Okay, so the, the questions I always get asked about farm-raised fish, one, what do you feed them? So these guys, they pretty much eat the same thing their entire life, depending, but with uh, varying protein and fat content. So they are started off on a very high protein diet. Most of it comes from wheat germ, yeast, and ground insects. Okay, so it's a it's a manufactured yeah. fish food. It's generally yeah, it's it's pelletized fish food. Okay, um, and it's generally tries to we try to meet their nutritional needs throughout stages of life. So for instance, the very young fingerling fish they get super high protein, like around fifty five percent, and as they increase in age, age uh, they move to around like thirty percent fat okay. and like only around twenty uh, percent protein. Okay, and then the next next couple of questions I always get asked. One, the water is coming from... The water starts all the way up there from St. John's Ponds. Uh, there's actually one water system that uh, goes all the way through. Okay. And that's to make sure that there's no uh, contamination. So there's a huge problem with like IPF or like fish diseases in general in hatcheries. So when you have one system that starts at the top and goes all the way down, it's a good way to control uh, where the infection spreads to. So, you know... Okay. If there's, the, at the top of the system, it's the most safeguarded where all the baby fish are. And as you go down, the older fish get the water that sort of funnels through because okay. they have a stronger immune system. Um, and it would be less of a detriment if the older fish died. And now, do you have an issue with these fish getting out into your next Cold Spring Harbor here? Usually not. Uh, you know, okay. the outtake is guarded by like a bunch of rails and stuff. They normally don't really swim in. Okay. Although we do have another problem, which is something from the harbor getting in. Oh really? So inside this pond over here, uh, you've seen that we have oh, a bunch there, of American there's eels. eels. Yeah. yeah. And in the springtime, there's glass eels by the pounds. Uh, for some reason, they just love sneaking their way up the pipes and into the system. <laughs> <laughs> and that can then, be a problem. so the main purpose of hatching the trout and everything is to do stocking. Yep. And stocking is purely, is it a recreational thing? Is it a sustainable food? What is what is the purpose of stocking rivers and lakes? So generally stocking is for recreational purposes. Okay. It's a way to make sure that you know, you're keeping a healthy population of fish going, that you aren't overfishing some local fish as well. Because these guys are going to tend to be the first ones to bite. They're just a, lot, a bit more ravenous uh, than some of like, the local fish that you're going to find. So okay. the majority of our fish, they go to like co-motors associations, want to stock your local pond or lake, or even river. Um, yeah, we could stock some larger fish, which have a generally a higher turnout rate, you know, like if you buy a large fish, it's going to survive. Or we could also stock a lot more of the tiny fish, like fingerlings, and that ensures that you're going to have a more uh, even dispersal of fish throughout the years to come. So you know, it'll grow up and it'll be there for like around 10 to 20 years. Okay. Well, thanks. Those are the those are the three. Whenever I talk about farm fish, those are the three main questions. Why? If they get out, what do you feed them? You know, that's that's everyone's uh, biggest fear is that they get out in the open and pollute the fisheries, but you're literally growing them to put them into the fishery.
Yeah, another thing is that this outtakes to the bay, so they wouldn't really be able to survive super long in that environment. Normally, it, it just sort of outtakes to a mud flat. Okay. So, it's not much to... Um, but, yeah, they wouldn't make it too far. Yeah, rainbow trout also, um, trout in general has been introduced to Long Island as early as like the 1700s for recreational fishing purposes. Okay. So, you're going to find lots of trout in the like waterways here, even if they haven't been stocked for a while, just native populations keep on uh, breeding. Cool. Well, all right, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for the fishing. I hope I didn't upset any too many kids catching more fish than them. But... <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Thank you, man. So the homemade rod from my mother's basement works. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, really beautiful, beautiful rainbow trout. Really beautiful. And before anyone gets on me, I caught a couple of fish, I hooked up with them with my regular rod and handed it off to the kids and let them uh, reel them in. So I wasn't the only one uh, catching there. But So what I want to make is actually tr smoked trout dip and uh, trout salad. And this salad is going to be a play off of Lomi Lomi Salmon which is a Hawaiian dish. It is salmon, uh, onion, tomato, lemon, but the salmon is raw. It's salt rubbed, which you shouldn't do with trout. You shouldn't eat it, eat it raw. So we are going to gut them, put them in a brine, possibly overnight. I'm not sure yet. And, uh, then we're gonna smoke them but that's it just split up the middle and all the guts come out and there we go I'm actually gonna scrape out that little bit of bloodline in there I did bonk them bleed them and brain them but with trout, there's this little bit of bloodline that runs up the uh, spine there. So I'm gonna clean those out. We'll throw them in the brine. And really, I'm not even gonna bother scaling them. I'm just gonna throw them in the brine and then we'll throw them in uh, a little homemade smoker. So yeah, this, this bloodline here, you can see it even coming out, even with me bleeding them that right there still has a bit in it then you just go in and take that out just like that see and we'll give these a, a rinse out inside okay this this is super cool so i just cut this one up and look, see if I can get it out without messing it up. But there is the row sack. Hang on, I just don't want to. How cool is that? All right, we're definitely doing something with that. Maybe not this episode, but I think. I gotta look up and see exactly how to cure these, but we will absolutely do something with those. That is cool. Yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna do something with it. <laughs> Stay tuned. So we rinsed our trout, cleaned out that, uh, that bloodline that was in the middle there, you know, I didn't go crazy with it. Doesn't really bother me too much, but yeah, that's all nice and clean. Iced down my brine, which was just equal parts brown sugar and salt mixed with hot water, then throw in ice to cool that water down because we don't want to throw our fish into hot water. This is the big one. Holy cow. That's a two pounder. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna throw this into the fridge. I'm actually gonna lose some of that liquid in there. 
I'm gonna throw that into the fridge and let it sit. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it overnight, but at least a couple of hours, at least three hours, bare minimum. Supposedly, curing the uh, trout roe is very easy. We will see about that. But put tepid water into a container. So about 115 degrees. And you want to get all the eggs separated from, oh, I'm blocking here. You want to get all the eggs separate like that from the, uh, I believe it's called a skein. Or I might be pronouncing that wrong. I looked very quickly. But the idea is to get them all off of that membrane. Trying not to crush them. Where's uh, Outdoor Chef Life when you need them? Taku, I need your help. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is your domain. Okay, so I got them all separated from that uh, membrane. It's probably hard to tell in here, but they're pretty much little individual eggs. And now, we have to cure them. So very simply, to cure these, we're going to do, uh, I have actually tamari, and then a little bit of rice vinegar, and now we let them sit. All right, we'll come back to those in a little bit. Good morning again. All right, so I let the fish uh, stay in the brine overnight. And right now I built my little makeshift smoker. I have just a couple of coals, nice and hot. And then on top of that, if you can see, that is actually a piece of turf from Ireland. Um, so I wet that down, put that on top of the coals. Everything's pushed to the side. I'm gonna put the grate on top and then put all of my uh, trout off to one side. And normally when you're smoking trout, you put it in the brine, take it out and let it uh, dry out so that it forms the pellicle. I didn't do that. I took them straight out of the, uh, out of the brine. I want them ice cold when they go in here so that they get more time to soak up some of that smoke and cook really, really slow. So I'm gonna get those onto the grill now. I'm going to let those go for about, I don't know, probably two, three hours. I'll come and check on them. I let the trout go for about, let's see, I put it on 8.30 this morning. So it's been on there for about three hours. It looks absolutely incredible. And our peat is still going. Look at the moisture come out of there. I couldn't couldn't be happier with the way that those smoked. So I'm gonna pull them off, let them cool down completely, and then we're gonna pick the meat. We're gonna make, I think I said two separate things. We're gonna make the trout salad that is uh, reminiscent of Lomi Lomi salmon, and then we're gonna make trout pate. So I'm gonna pick them, put them in two separate bowls, and then we'll get to mixing. I let these guys all cool down. And now I'm going to pick all of the meat. 
and put in two separate bowls. So equal parts, you know, half and half in each. But wow. <laughs> Wow. That's already delicious. I was a little bit, I wouldn't say concerned, but curious as to how the trout were gonna be, the fact that it, these trout had never left those pens. And that is whatever they're feeding them is right because that is a really nice, clean, beautiful taste all right i'm going to start picking get them in our bowls and then we'll make our pate and salad Okay, now we add cream cheese. I like to get the whipped one because it mixes in much, much better. Almost that whole container. Now, Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of mayo. A little bit of garlic salt. Some ground white pepper. Ground black pepper would be just as good. And a little bit of paprika. We'll do one lemon. This time I'm being smart. I got my sieve. <laughs> Instead of trying to pick out all the uh, pits. All right, we'll give that a stir. I like to kind of mash the fish down to help break it up. Also keep, keep an eye out for some bones or a big old piece of skin like that. <laughs> All right, starting to come together here. I really want that fish to break up. So, I mean, you could even put this in a mixer like I said, everyone has their own method to uh, fish dip. It's pretty funny. And then the other thing is that I want to get this into the fridge so it has time to set up and become a little bit more uh, spreadable. But let's give that a taste. That is pretty. Need a little more salt. A little more Worcestershire. Definitely more lemon. And actually, I'm going to put in the rest of the jalapeno. All right, there's our fish tip. We're going to put this into the fridge inside, and now we'll make our uh, trout salad. Okay, so now for our, the trout salad, this is super, super simple. We have a white onion. Now this, I'm not gonna chop as fine as we chop the uh, red onion for the pate. This I'm gonna leave a little clunkier. One tomato. These are really beautiful Long Island grown tomatoes. I'm glad I stopped at that farm stand. A 
good amount of scallion. Some lemon. And some garlic salt. <laughs> Take out any bones you find. <laughs> Now I want to stir this kind of gently. I don't really want to break up that fish any more than it's broken up. That is nice, light, bright. Let's the trout come through. Wow. This is a very simple dish, but really, really refreshing and nice. Toast it up, just a couple of pieces of uh, baguette. And now these, these dishes are really actually very different from each other, even though they're both made with the smoked trout. One, the pate is gonna be very, very rich, um, very heavy dish. And then the salad is gonna be very, very light and refreshing. Now something else I'm going to add that, if you remember, we cured uh, the trout roe. So right here I have the cured trout roe that was in the rice vinegar and the tamari. And uh, let me tell you, it's absolutely delicious. So... Okay, so we have smoked trout salad. That's got white onion, tomato, a little bit of lemon, and then smoked trout pate, which has Worcestershire, little, little more flavor. So we'll go back and forth. I didn't bring napkins, but there's a towel here, so. Okay, I will use that. I would start with the trout salad. That's exactly where I was going. Okay. When you said that that had more flavor, I figured, yeah. I don't want to ruin my palate. Yeah. Oh, and then one. and then that's the trout row on top. All right. There's, I like the crusty bread. <laughs> uh, I like the tomato. Yeah. Bursts in your mouth with a little liquid, and there's a nice, faint flavor of vinegar. It's lemon. Lemon, there's rather. No, Sorry. Yeah, there's no vinegar. <laughs> but it does taste vinegary somehow, to me. Yeah. To, to my taste buds. Might be the lemon mixing with the smoke of the uh, turf. Okay. Giving it a unique kind okay. of flavor. But it's very nice. And okay. Yeah, very nice. I'm gonna take another bite. Yeah, feel free. Take your time. <laughs> I'm gonna mm. move on to the, the second one here. Mm. And I also have to say that they both look very attractive. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The pat the pate for me takes it. If I ate the trout salad and I didn't know the pate existed, I'd be happy with the salad, but the salad has more flavor. This has a stronger aftertaste from whatever you put in there. Huh? Wait for the point. <laughs> you haven't gotten to the row yet. No. <laughs> Wait till you get to the row. Wow. That adds a whole new depth of flavor. Mmm. Oh yeah, very nice. <laughs> That's good, right? <laughs> very nice. Not hot, but vibrant. Yeah. Yeah, a nice vibrant and a lot of moisture. Yeah, I was not expecting the roe to be inside that fish, so I'm glad I did. That yeah. was my first time ever curing it. I didn't know that it was that easy. Uh, mm. Really, something special that elevated the dish a lot and something very, very simple. Well, okay. We're gonna finish these. Ma, you should have seen me. I outfished every six-year-old there. Punished them. 
<laughs> Absolutely punish them. I don't know if I should be proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I let the little kids have fun on the run. Okay. But... <laughs> Alright, guys. If you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>